All right. Uh, my name is Greg Pearson, and I'm doing my reputation speech on Maria Ornelas's. Um, her claim is that the creation of a comprehensive immigration reform, which means to grant illegal immigrants legal residence, will improve the current economic status of the U.S. Her secondary claims were, creation, were that there would be a creation of new jobs, the demand for goods and services spurs business activity, there will be an increase of national wealth, and native-born people will not be affected or displaced from their jobs and or working conditions. On her first claim that there would be a creation of new jobs, uh, she states the evidence that during the 1970s, heavy immigration stimulated economic growth and significant job creation. Um, during the 1970s, the unemployment rate actually increased from approximately 5.3 percent at the beginning of the 1970s until uh, or to over 7 percent and even to, into 9 percent until approximately 1986 or 87. Just for or just before this um, happened and the unemployment rate decreased, the Immigration Reform and Control Act was passed. The Immigration Reform and Control Act uh, was passed in order to control and deter illegal immigration to, to the United States. Its major provisions stipulate legalization of undocumented aliens who have been continuously unlawfully present since 1982, legalization of certain agricultural workers and sanctions for employers who knowingly hire undocumented workers and increased enforcement of U.S. borders. Basically what the Immigration Reform uh, and Control Act did was it put a penalty on employers who hired, who knowingly hired illegal immigrants. Um, as um, uh, the senator from North Dakota said in a statement, America's workers have enough downward pressure on their wages because of unfair trade deals and corporate outsourcing of millions of jobs every year. The last thing they need now is to have an inflow of millions of more immigrants competing for their jobs at substandard wages. So as you can see, this will not create any new jobs, but would rather hurt the jobs that there already are. Um, because if the 12 million more immigrants, if legalized, will be looking for the same jobs as the current number of unemployed workers in the United States, or unemployed Americans. Her second claim, that the demand for goods and services for a specific activity. Uh, she gives uh, a fact that illegal immigrants demand public services such as transportation, schools, fire, and police protection. These are all public services that all Americans or anybody in America gets to enjoy. And these are all paid for by taxes. And current illegal immigrants do not pay taxes. Therefore, they are uh, they are not paying for the services that they receive. Uh, so that means they're de demanding business activities, but those businesses are not being um, paid more. They do not see any extra income or anything like that. Her third claim that um, there would be an increase of national wealth, like I said, um, illegal immigrants do not pay taxes, therefore, and they're taking advantage of public services. So, um, and one of the biggest things that uh, it, this is uh, public housing that the federal government supplies. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development reports that approximately 59,000 people are ineligible non-citizens. This means that they are not eligible for the housing that is being provided. But they are being, um, uh, they are allowed in uh, due to the fact that um, one of their children is a legal citizen because they have been born on U.S. soil. Uh, Frank Bean, director of University of California, Irvine, Center for Research on Immigration, Population, and Public Policy, estimates that half, at least half of ineligible non-citizens, non or about 30,000, are illegal immigrants with U.S. born children. Anyone born on US, on U.S. soil is automatically a citizen, making their families eligible for federal housing. Because they're not pay because the illegal immigrants are not paying taxes, they're not paying the taxes to accommodate them in their own house, and the American ta taxpayers are actually the ones paying for them to live. Um, if the American taxpayer is paying for it, then is leading then is not leading to an actual to an actual increase in national wealth. Her last claim that uh, native-born people will not be affected or displaced from their jobs or their working conditions. Um, 
I have found that the AFL-CIO president, John J. Sweeney, said that guest worker programs frequently amount to virtual servitude, um, which allows employers to import temporary workers to do permanent jobs. All workers will suffer because employers, or he states, all workers will suffer because employers will have available a ready pool of labor they can exploit to drive down wages, benefits, and health and safety protections and other workplace standards. Uh, she also gives evidence that illegal immigration accomplishes what legal immigration does not. It moves large number of low-skilled workers from a low productivity, productivity to a high productivity environment. This movement of a large number of workers will actually push the low, the low-skilled Americans out, out of work, and therefore not. Um, it will hurt the current Americans. So, as you can see, the creation of the comprehen comprehensive immigration reform will actually not improve the current economic economic status of the U.S. Thank you. All right, the claims are labeled uh, clearly. I think uh, you need to develop a little bit more information on uh, the first point in developing a counterclaim, but the second and third points uh, you did a better job on. Um, you had some good evidence of your own. I think you need to analyze the advocate's evidence on some of these points so that we can do a little more contrast. I'm rushing because I want to get in one more speaker before we're done. So Bijan, could you be our final speaker for